All righty, let's do a show. It's the Leafs Convo. Norm, Mike, and you. Sunday, April 7th, 2024. The day after, the Leafs beat the Habs 4-2 at Centre Bell. Uh, beat them on the score sheet. Uh, beat them physically. And the Leafs now have six to play. Wrapping up the regular season. Getting set for what we believe could be a tilt with the Florida Panthers. How would that be for a rematch to kick off the 2024 Stanley Cup players playoffs, Mr. Agello? Good morning. How are you? What's on your mind? Good morning, Norm. Um, well, I mean, it, it's it's funny because I'm, I'm hearkening back to, I think it was 2012, 2013. It was the year that the Leafs made the playoffs, breaking the nine-year um, playoff drought. And they went into the Bell Center with Colton Orr and Fraser McLaren and beat the shit out of the Habs. Um, you know, I mean, not to say that that last night was the was the equivalent of that, but you know, you said beat him on the scoreboard, beat him in the alley. That was sort yeah. of uh, you know Ryan Reeves um, after sort of not getting jumped, but he got. I think he got the lesser of the the two in the Arbor Jack I fight in the uh, in the season opener. Um, I don't think there was any doubt of who he of uh, who won the fight between him and Pizzetta. Now that that you know that being said, like does that mean is that determinative in terms of you know anything? No, but you could see the reaction on the bench, especially right. Austin Matthews doing the you know woo you know like right. doing the Rick Rick Flair. I mean. Reeves does provide this team with a bit of cover and a bit of energy. And he has stepped that up. And there's no been there was no harsher critic of him earlier in the season than I was because he was playing like crap. Right. He it self-admittedly was playing like crap. He was, I mean, at a certain point, I thought he was going to be waived. Um, the last week or two, maybe he's ramping it up for the playoffs. Maybe he's trying to lock himself into a playoff uh, roster spot. Right. But he's playing way, the way most people expected him to play. And again, especially against the Panthers and a, a bit against the Lightning and then against the Habs, he has made his physicality uh, known. This is the Leafs Combo for Oak Ridge Ford in London, Ontario, oakridgeford.com. You know the spiel. There's always a program going on that will benefit you, whether new, used, retail, lease, truck, SUV, electric, internal combustion engine. I have got you. April is really frenetic at the dealership at Norman Oak Ridge Ford. I have your next vehicle. And to the OGs and converts who reach out to me on the daily uh, for my assistance, in um, helping them uh, purchase a vehicle or even just uh, kind of lay out the groundwork for a, a potential buy in the future. Uh, thank you very much for reaching out to me. I do not take it lightly and I appreciate it very much. Uh, there's a lot to unpack here, Mike. Usually we try to have a short show and they go along. OGs and converts love that very much. Just quickly on Reeves. Mm -hmm. You know, um, he's delivered of late. It's been consistent and your reaction to it, Mike, in kind shows that you know you can evolve your stance based on a player producing the mm -hmm. thing with reeds is he can toss them he can provide some energy but is he fast enough and is he a guy who can uh you know implement more than just the fisticuffs in the playoffs and right. be a, not, not an integral guy uh to the team but somebody who can keep up with the pace and hold his own. And if in the uh, circumstance he does need to toss him, you know it's there. But before those fights, before those physical altercations, if they happen in the playoffs, mm -hmm. what can he contribute? Well, I mean, as you know, and as everybody knows, fighting pretty much goes by the wayside in the playoffs, unless it's garbage time at the end of the game and it's 5-2 or something like that and somebody wants to change the momentum or something of that nature. I think what you saw... Uh, in the game against Florida earlier in the week is, I think, what Reeves would bring. I mean, you're maybe not going to mess with anybody when Reeves is in the lineup because he's going to call you to account. Now, right. now that means, you know, it's not going to be where he's going to get suspended like an idiot uh, right. a few years ago did. But, Mike, uh, if, there's, if, if we're not expecting him to fight in the playoffs, what can he do? to be sure that when he's on the ice, he is not a liability. 
Well, I mean, it, what I was going to say was, I mean, he he laid out, especially against Tampa, he laid out Hedman. He laid out Dumba a couple of times. He's not going to play 15 minutes a night. He's going to play seven, eight minutes, but he's he needs to provide energy and right. physicality. He needs right. to punish, and he's big enough, right. and he's tough enough that you know if say they play florida right he's gonna take he's gonna he's gonna pay, make guys like aaron Eckblad, who's been in and out of the lineup with injuries mm -hmm. and montour and you know maybe the bennett's and the lomborgs and the and, and the uh uh nick cousins he's gonna call them to account if they try to if okay remember in the playoffs a year ago nick cousins it was either nick cousins or sam bennett laid out Matthew Nyes and knocked him out for the playoffs. Right. I don't know whether that's going to happen because th this time around, simply because if they do that, then okay. Ryan Reeves is going to go, is going to go at Barkov or go at Kachuk. Right. It's, it's the old thing, Norm, that we talked about in, and I mentioned this before in 93 and 94, um, Wendell Clark was going at Gretzky in game one of the of the famous series against the Kings. And McSorley said, you keep going after Gretzky. I'm going after Gilmore. And then then he did. He hit Gilmore at center ice. And then there was the famous right. fight between Wendell and McSorley. The following year, um, Gino Ojic was going at Doug Gilmore again in the, in the conference final. And Wendell Clark skated to the bench and says, he keeps doing that. I'm going at that mother. And he pointed at Pavel Burr. Yeah. It's a calming effect. It's it's like you you know mutually assured destruction. You, destruction. You right. do that. I'm doing this. You think that's Neanderthal talk, but it's necessary in these playoffs. Mike, I'm getting excited for Leafs Panthers if it's meant to be in the first round. And I love when you recollect and reminisce about the great one seven Wendell Clark. He is your hockey hero, and um, rightfully so. What a player of wax and yeah we we can uh, dream about the <laughs> the days when hockey was just absolutely crazy and mad things have changed and uh, we move on i do want to get to a couple of comments here jason m the leafs playoff snot is about to cause teams problems in a couple of weeks thanks jason spike 11 a convert boston and florida are fake tough leafs showing that they won't get pushed around anymore love reeves and spike's been uh, on team reeves throughout the entire season and of course the og michael matthew uh, in the caribbean right now but says he's coming up for for the playoffs mike we're glad to have you back uh he will finish off checks to the d-man and wear them down in the playoffs Mike, uh, the, the win last night, the excitement of the playoffs to come, the way Reeves is playing, we'll talk about Austin Matthews, the return of Marner on uh, Nylander about to hit a, 100 points, the stabilization of Ilya Samsonov between the pipes. <laughs> There's an optimism right now, Mr. Angelo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, and, the, and the, I think <laughs> you're gonna pour the cold water. Well, no, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna pour the cold water, but I, but you know, I, I, I'm. I'm looking at it objectively. Right. And I look at this team and whether they are better than the team that was in the playoffs last year. And I, my answer is no, because Ryan O'Reilly was on that team and you had Achari and uh, Shen. Now it's different. I mean, there are different things being brought. And can you say that, you know, Tyler Bertuzzi and Max Domi were brought in for this type, this time of year. Domi played well in the playoffs with Dallas. Bertuzzi was the best player probably on the Bruins against Florida. So um, they were brought in. They brought in Joel Edmondson, who was a you know won a Stanley Cup in St. Louis, went to a Cup final with with Montreal. Big tough defenseman. Yeah. You know he's probably going to get in the lineup the last few games this season. I think they're just making sure he's a hundred as close to hundred percent healthy as possible. Right. You know they get Yaron Croak. We'll talk about the lineup stuff in a minute. But what I'm saying is. It's not all on all on Ryan Reeves to be the toughness. You've got enough players there like Edmondson, like Jake McCabe, who steps up physically, like Simone Benoit if he gets in the lineup. He helps um, enable the toughness though, Mike, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I think he I think he infuses the team with energy. And right. now, like okay. I said, you saw you saw Batman now Austin Matthews is not going to take runs of people. But obviously, if he's physical because he's a big body and he right. wins puck battles along the wall, right. and 
Domi and Bertuzzi are are like playing like their hair is on fire. I love it. Oh, I love it. And then you know that then that that is to the benefit of the Leafs. But again, um, they're going to play a style that they are no not mm. accustomed to. Right. Um, you know, because that hasn't been the uh, agenda for most of the year, whereas Florida plays that game all the time. Um, that's the that you know, that's their bailiwick. That's what they that's what they do. Kachuk is a pain in the ass. Right. Uh L- Lomborg and and Cousins stir the pot. Hey, Mike Arnav, good luck against Florida, man. The whole team would need to bring 100 yeah. and absorb hits. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's what I'm saying. It, it can't be all on Ryan Reeves to be the, the right. to be the sheriff. It's going to have to be, you know, team toughness. And I, 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 I'm pretty sure it was McCabe. Somebody hit McCabe, and the, the the Leafs had a power play, and McCabe held back one of his teammates from taking an act of retribution. And it's like that's the kind of smart stuff. You know, when you get a power play in the pop in the playoffs, you need to be able to, you know. Think smart, not take the retaliatory penalty. Get the power play and, and make it make them hurt where it hurts the most on the scoreboard. But this team against Florida, and right now it's starting to look like it's going to be Florida because Tampa lost in regulation yesterday to Pittsburgh, but and Toronto won, so now they're four points up on the Lightning with a game in hand. So more than likely, unless it gets down to two points and Tampa Bay wins late in the season when the Leafs are there. It's probably going to be Florida. Florida lost to Boston. It looks like Boston's going to win, win first place, and Florida's going to be in second. If it's Florida, Toronto, you know, gird your loins up, folks. It's Let's going to be go. it's going to be a mother. Let's go, OG's converts. Like the content, subscribe to the channel. I I see you. I appreciate your contributions. Everybody has something to say. I can't get to all the comments in the chat. But come on back for the the replay on YouTube. Leave your comments there. Interact with the other OGs and converts. Uh, We're having a great time as as season six winds down. How long will we continue uh, this this particular batch of content uh, from your friendly neighborhood Leafs Convo? Well, that really depends on the Maple Leafs. Will it be three more weeks after today or three more months. Wouldn't it be nice if we can keep going uh, on and on doing three, maybe four shows a week based uh, around the Leafs and their uh, protracted run through the playoffs? Uh, that would be the, the best thing ever, OG's Converts. I know you feel the same way. You know, if the Leafs can beat Florida, if they do play the Panthers or you know, whether it's in the first round or second round, they would be disrupting the potential or the, the order of things because the the Panthers, uh, you know, backed into the playoffs on the on the last day last season, and then went on a run. And you, you, they've got to believe that they have all the ingredients to finish the job this time. So yeah, the, you know, the Leafs have their own agenda. But if they can beat Florida in that first round, that uh, that ascent that you'd think um, the Panthers are entitled to, based on what they did last season, would be completely. Um, uh, stopped and halted and then maybe the Leafs create something of their own uh it's 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 just exciting right now Mike and, and you know you and I have ridden the wave of of the, the way the Leafs play and they're good and then they're bad and the, the you know, fans are you know uh, frenetic about things where we are at this stage as long as nothing uh, you know falls apart nobody gets injured the team kind of continues to uh, ramp itself up for the playoffs they're in a, as good a damn position um, as they could have been. Austin yeah. Matthews, did you want to leave? Uh, make yeah, no, point? I was just going to say that the Panthers last year are, were playing with house money, right? Oh, so, so this year that you know they're the favorite. If they, if they play the Leafs, they're the favorite for sure. Um, and, I, and one thing you know, somebody in the chat brought it up. Um, right now, you know, knock on wood, um, the Leafs will be probably completely healthy going into the playoffs. Right, uh, Yarn, Yarn Croak. Um, uh, is somebody who probably will be back at that point. And Edmondson, um, I think will probably be back in the next week. They say he's skating. So I think they're, like I said, they're just doing a bit of load management and making sure that he's healthy. Whereas, uh, Florida lost Carter Verhage, right. Uh, in the game against the Leafs, 
Um, and it's week to week. So it's not a, it's, it, you know, it's something that might keep him out the rest of the regular season and could hamper him in the playoffs. I'm not sure what the injury was. And Ekblad is at least out till game one. So, you know, they're going in with some, you know, issues injury wise, and it'll be up to the, up to the Leafs to take advantage of that. Until the Leafs prove they can <coughs> do it by actually doing it. And it meaning, winning two or three rounds, getting into the Stanley Cup final, winning the whole thing. Mm -hmm. We are going to be polarized. Adriano, de Blasio, we've all seen this story before. And then you have Canadian white trash guy. He's always got a great opinion. Maurice, the former Leafs coach. It was, geez, that was what, 20 years now. Um, coaches ice soccer, not ice hockey. Mm -hmm. And uh, will be easier to beat in the first round. I mean, what's your take yeah. on that before yeah. we get to Boston Matthews? I mean, uh, no, I, I don't buy into that. Paul Maurice is a very good coach. He's been to – he got to the Stanley Cup final with the team last year that nobody expected. They barely made the playoffs, was the underdog against Boston, was the underdog against Toronto, was the underdog against Carolina. You know, I mean, no. Yeah, you know, I, I, just, I think that, uh, you know, that team – uh, and the job that he has done has been Im Im impressive. I mean, he's probably going to get some uh, Jack Adams votes. So, yeah, um, yeah he's Isak. Maurice's track record speaks for itself. Panthers have a, a coaching advantage and until they don't. If the Leafs beat the Panthers because the, the, the players just overcame the adversity and got it done. Right. I mean, Sheldon Keefe may or may not get any credit there, but. You know, I mean, the the coach isn't going to win you the series. I actually think Sheldon Keefe has done a pretty good job this year. I mean, I know there's the critics out there. I know, you know, some people don't like the lineups that he puts out. Some people don't like the pairings he puts together. Does don't like, the, you know, he's dealt with three goaltenders with a ton of defensemen with injuries. I think they've done a pretty decent job. You know, obviously it comes down to the playoffs. You know, last year he beat John Cooper, who's won a couple Stanley Cups. But, you know, again, he was playing against – the Leafs were playing against a gassed Tampa team. Um, I, he Maybe he got out coached. I think the Leafs were just not a good matchup for Florida. Maybe they're more prepared to play Florida this year. But in the end, um, I, you know, unless he makes some dramatic – tactical error it, it, you're right it doesn't come down to the coaches it comes down right. to the players on the ice and the positions that they're put in and what they do when that when when the the rubber heats meets the road yeah and the Leafs are ramping up to be a, a physical group of 14 hits amongst the defensive core last night just about everybody uh, lay in the body and you know that's just something you're going to have to do if you want to be successful as I've said over and over again, and it's true. If you and I are both the same skill level, both same compete, both same endurance, but I'm tougher, I win 100%. Austin Matthews, speaking of, speaking of tough as nails, I mean, uh, like th this guy just keeps going and scoring. And, um, you know, I'm sure the bullshit he has to put up with, maybe not 80s-esque, Mike, but it, it's there. 64 goals with six games to play. He's already scored 60 in his career. Mm. He's six goals away from 70. If, you know, as as, as you pointed out, um, if he picks up a hat trick between now and game 82, th that puts him at 67, three to go to hit the 70 mark. No one has scored 70 goals. With all the great goal, goal scorers, the Crosbys and the, um, you know, the Ovechkins and you name it. Nobody scored 70 in the last 30 years. The last two to do it were Alex McGillney and Timu Solani. Mm -hmm. And Austin Matthews, our boy, the, maybe the best pure goal scorer of this generation, is six goals away from reaching that plateau. Do you think he can do it, my friend? It's possible. I think that um, obviously the goal of this team is at the play is pointed at the playoffs and Matt Matthews is on but this is a big this is a big I, I, know, I, know, I know I know I know but what what I'm saying is unless he's at 69 in the last game he's right. not in the last game if right. he's at 67 and they're playing Florida they're not he's not playing because the the goal here is to win in the playoffs and if you put him out and I, I think I used this example before Patrice Bergeron and this was at the end of his career but Patrice Bergeron Wanted to play in Montreal in Game 82, well for the Bruins because I think he's from he's from near Montreal, 
and he got hurt in that last game. And right. that tanked the Bruins playoffs. And so, you know, you, you need Austin Matthews. I mean, he's 20, what, 26 years old. He, you know, I, I mean, it's not going to say you're going to have another opportunity to score 70 goals, but he's going to have to score. He's probably going to have to score a hat trick in one of the next couple games to get close enough to get 70 before right. that last weekend. That, that but last Mike, when couple- Austin Matthews is going six goals in six games is nothing. And Edward Lee, Wow, the sarcasm. Will there be a parade for 70 goals? I get it. You're, you're, you know, we're, of course, it's the, the team objective and getting excited and ready for the playoffs and fully prepared. If Austin Matthews needs the rest, then give him the rest. But this is, again, a very big deal, something that hasn't been done in, in 30 years. It's just, is he, as you pointed it out, Mike, and you're correct about this. And I'm sure Matthews concurs, the team concurs, and the, the fan base at large uh, would believe the same thing. If he's in position to, and it does not look like you know, it, his, um, the, the opportunity could jeopardize his health or uh, you know, future advancement of this team, he's going to take it. Right. Yeah. No, that's why I think, that's why I think he's going to have to, score and i'm just looking at their at their schedule here um you know they okay so they have (laughs) pittsburgh back to back with new jersey and detroit in the next four games three at home and then they go for the back-to-backs uh in florida and tampa bay um i would think that he plays the four games the next four and then he plays one of the two against tampa or or Florida probably not the Florida game because you know Florida will take a Florida will take a run at them. I mean I mean again you, you, that's why that's when it's important to have right. a guy like Reeves in the lineup. Right. You know that they're going to try to put a hurt on these guys because they they're going to play them in the first right. round of the playoffs. Okay. And that, that's the way it's going to go. So you're I you know maybe he plays five of the six, right. but he's going to have to probably be at sixty eight or sixty nine to play in one of those last two games. OG's converts, what say you? I'll uh, put a, together a poll in the community portion of the YouTube page, youtube.com slash leapscombo slash community. Uh, I, I, we'll, we'll, I don't know. I'll come up. <laughs> I'll come up with something uh, in, in addition to, you know, coming up with a bunch of other things I need to do today to get things going. You know, Sundays uh, for me are just the, the precious hours to just accomplish things that have been that have been sitting around for the entire week needing to be done. Uh, in addition to this podcast, but uh, it's always a pleasure to, to join you, Mr. Angelo, and the OGs and converts to talk Maple Leafs, especially right now where there's a bit of spirit and uh, optimism, and we're, we're feeling um, excited about what's to come because it's a, another foray into the playoffs. And regardless of that uh, internal skepticism, there is always the optimism in the back of our heads that maybe this is the year, even if it doesn't look like it. Uh, that all remains to be seen. What else did you want to hit on here, Mike? We wanted to keep it somewhat short. Did you want to break uh, break things down by position now, or did you want to wait a, a few well, games well, to, to get closer to the playoffs to do that? Well, I, I think we can, and I did this this week uh, on Hockey Buzz, um, breaking down position by position, not like every guy. In no, the, no. But, but you know, um, I think which team, if it's Leafs, Florida Mm -hmm. or Leafs, anybody, do the Leafs have the advantage at forward regardless of who they play? No, they don't. I mean, against Boston, I think they have a clear advantage at forward against the Rangers and Carolina. I think they'd be about even against Florida. I think Florida has the advantage. Right. Um, But now for Hagee is out. You know that's one of their that's one of their pillars. So is that, that just the tenacity and the physicality of the yeah. Florida forwards? That, yeah, I mean, that outweighs what the Leafs can bring. The talent level there with Barkov, with okay. Reinhardt, Lundell, with Bennett, and Verhage if he's healthy. You know they, they, I mean they don't have a sixty-four goal score, but Bennett is, uh, but Reinhardt right. is second with fifty-three. So right. they, you know, they've got firepower. And their defense is is better than the Leafs. But the Leafs' names Na- are, names don't names don't mean like, names don't mean squat. Okay, okay. It's what they it, you know and you know okay, the, you know uh, Neilanders had a career year and Matthews has got sixty some odd goals. Um, 
thankfully for the Leafs, um, it seems that Bertuzzi and Domi have kicked into playoff mode a little early. And I think it was curious that um, Keefe put Marner coming back after a month with Tavares and kept the the Matthews uh, per Bertuzzi Domi line together. And that line scored two goals. So he's going to keep that together. And that does nothing but lengthen the Leafs lineup to have Marner with Tavares have that luxury and not the, the luxury of not having to put either Nylander or to, or Marner with Matthews and have Matthews producing. Yeah. Now you've got three lines. Now you've got Marner and Tavares and whoever on the wing, probably maybe Yarn Croak when Yarn Croak comes back, you move McMahon down and or Nyes down. And then, you know, you've got to make Mann or Nyes on the fourth line. Now you've got Nylander on the third line. You right. know, the, the depth of that lineup, that gives them – now, that helps them against Florida. I still think Florida it will have an advantage. Um, again, if Verhage is out, that then it evens things a little bit. But th- that's where like the interesting things are going to happen, and we'll see what's going to happen over the last less, le- little less than two weeks. Um, to me, if, if game one was tomorrow, Samsonov is starting because Wall has been inconsistent. Defensively, um, I think it's going to be, you know, if they were playing a team other than Florida, maybe they could get away with playing defensemen who weren't as physical. I think that, you know, you're probably going to see, you're definitely going to see Edmondson in the lineup. You're probably going to, you could see Benoit in the lineup. Okay, Mike, real quick. Let me go through the defensive um, group from last night's game in Montreal. Benoit, right. McCabe, Riley, Labushkin, Giordano, Brody. Yep. So who comes out, who goes in for game one of the playoffs? I think Riley stays with Labushkin. I know people are critical of Labushkin, but the left-right thing and Labushkin in terms of his, you know, he's a physical guy as well, so he's not going to get pushed around. Um, So Riley Labushkin, I would say, um, I don't think... And you need somebody who can elevate Riley's uh, offensive talents and his maneuverability by staying back and, and also not only just staying back, but having a presence there physically. Exactly. Right. Um... I think that, you know, McCabe is a definite uh, in the lineup. But then everybody else is a question mark because, remember, really? yeah, Liljegren, Liljegren comes back, Edmondson comes back, and I think Liljegren and Edmondson is probably a pairing. And right. then your thir- and then your third, you know, third pair or, you know, McCabe and Brody, McCabe and um, – Benoit, I mean, it might be McCabe and Benoit because they've worked so well together, and then that means T.J. Brody is out of the lineup. And okay, I find, so wait, hold I find, I find it hard to this. believe that T.J. Brody will be out of the Let lineup. Let me write this down. Riley Labushkin in your top pairing. Right. Okay. Ed, Edmondson, Liljegren probably is your bottom pairing. Okay. And then McCabe and question mark. It could be Benoit. It could be uh, Brody. So wow. I mean, do you, you know, like the do? You, is this a good thing going into the playoffs? Because if they go deep, it does become a it starts to become a war of attrition, or you have to expect yes. that to to rear its uh, inevitable head. But yeah, to I'm, have a turnstile of serviceable defensemen who want to get in there and make an impact is a good thing, as yeah. opposed to just being completely I, depleted. I think depth is definitely an advantage, but as I and I, I know that you thought it was hilarious, but it's 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 really. It's really, uh, yeah, white trash guy saying because I'm from Buffalo, I, I don't know hockey. Yeah, okay, whatever. Um, but uh, no, the 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 issue is is you've got a collection of fives and sixes. Right. Um, I think McCabe is probably a second pairing guy. I think Lilligren can be, um, but. Yes, you have depth. You just don't have – I think you're missing two top four defensemen, and right. there's nothing they can do about that now. But right. really, I mean, the depth is an advantage, and you know that Florida, if they play Florida, is going to beat on the Leafs defensemen. So it's you know good that you have Brody and Benoit and Giordano and Timmons <sighs> that are waiting in the wings to potentially play if somebody gets hurt. So we know the forward group will hold its own – Star power to star power, equal if not a little bit better, but it's capability that we're wondering about due to the fact that this forward group, the core four, and you know now the the extras 
um, you know, haven't had a chance to go on any kind of run or they have, don't have the like a you know, playoff success to a level of uh, earning pedigree for mm-hmm. us to rely on when we're making the argument. But that remains to be seen if they can um, develop a, uh, a cohesion that leads to success. With the defensive group, it's a bunch of guys. The depth is there, all pretty decent. No major star power, you know, the the big number one stalwart that, you know, the Leafs have been missing, but it is what it is. Uh, it's nice that they do have enough bodies and guys who will be in the press box seething and uh, champing at the bit to get in. What about the goaltending, Mike? It's um, talk about night and day, right? Um, the the anticipation of Joseph Wall's return so he can take his rightful place as number one mm-hmm. while, you know, we watch... Um, Ilya Samsonov have a, 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 a breakdown and then uh, fall apart and then nearly leave the team and then come back and just kind of cobble things together. And here he is, the guy that most fans would say um, are, is the, the feel-good story of the season. From the depths of despair to the, the pinnacle of goodwill, uh, Ilya Samsonov has to be your starter, Mike, and you know he may go thud. But he may not, and he may do some special stuff. And considering everything he's dealt with this season, uh, that would not only look good on him, um, it would be justification for him. Yeah, I mean, I think, <laughs> well, no, I, I, I it's a delayed response. I'm trying to gen him up, Mike. Well, I, 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 you know, I think that a lot of people are very, you know, remember Sam Snuff was the Masterson Trophy nominee, and what he's gone through this year, and him being able to bounce back from his, you know, uh, bruised or broken psyche and go 17, three and one since the middle of June or January is, is phenomenal, but we know that that can come back and that's the problem. Now that's why had Joseph wall come back and played like Joseph wall had played right. before he got injured, Joseph wall would be the goalie going into the playoffs, but he hasn't, he's been inconsistent. Um, a three month layoff, a high ankle sprain. I think he, I don't think he's played badly, but I don't think he has been, you know, he stole games in early December, that game against Ottawa. He was incredible. I mean, you know, if he had just come back in the lineup and played that way, then I think you could have made a case for him to be the starter, okay. but Samsonoff has been consistent. He's made, you know, he was really great in Buffalo last Saturday. You know, he's been really, he's been really good. But I do think that the one concern about him being your number one guy in the playoffs is that one bad goal can unravel him. And but that could happen to any goaltender, Mike. Yeah, but 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 there's already evidence that it happened this year with him. Right. Now, you know, if he has the but mental he's not in a different place, does he not have a perspective now that maybe he didn't have at that time when things were falling apart? I, don't, I, I can't tell you that. Maybe maybe that's the truth. But, I mean, let's just say this. I would prefer to have somebody who has a clean slate in terms of, you know, a psyche. It's, it's, sort, of, it's sort of like to use the, to use the baseball uh, example, somebody who's got the yips like Steve right. Sachs at second base or Knobloch right. couldn't make the throw to sec, from second to first because of a, men, a Mackie Sasser with the Mets. Couldn't throw it back to the pitcher. Right. He was a catcher. That's sort of important. Now, you know, not to say that, you know, Samsonov could come up big in the playoffs. He, you know, as Sheldon Keefe said, he was the guy who won the playoff series for them against Tampa. I mean, I think, you know, some other guys had something to do with it, but he didn't out goal 10 Vasilevsky, but he played well. So I'm not going to take anything away from him, but I'm just looking at it and saying, if you were, if, if you're looking at Samsonov and thinking that, Oh, he's going to steal games and there's I have no doubts. He lets in one bad goal, Leaf the Leaf fan base is going to say, "Oh, there you go. There's there's the Samson off of November and December." And then he makes a bunch of saves, they go into overtime, steals the game, they win and then all it, is forgotten about Patrick G Mafia. With this team, it's self-belief they can beat any team in the league. There's no doubt about that, Patrick. There's no doubt about that. But there's a stigma attached to this group, especially the core four, and their lack of playoff success over the last seven, eight years. You'd think with that kind of talent, that kind of might, and the money that is being spent to uh, you know, propagate and elevate this group, that they would have more to show for it. 
Another opportunity is on the horizon. We're a couple of weeks away. It may be wrapped up in four games, five games, six games, but it may also go as longer than it ever has before. Um, any other things you want to add here, Mike, before we wrap it up? Just the one, uh, uh, Wilford in the chat mentioned Martin Jones. I do think they'll get Martin Jones a start before right. the before the playoffs, just to have him not like not play for like two months and then maybe be needed in a playoff scenario. So I, I do think there's a possibility he'll get a start. But I would think that with these six games remaining at back to backs Monday, Tuesday, you're going to see Samson off Wall. And then maybe Samson off and Wall or Samson off and Jones in the uh, in the last uh, couple Con- games. Convict Mike is kind of negative. No, why? I, really? It, no, no. But Mike, it's pers- but it's perspective, Mike. I, and I, you know, the the negativity that you that use of that word is we we throw it around so liberally. Like I it's like I, if you were if you hated the Leafs and wanted to see them fail and were sick and tired of this po- podcast and had disdain for the people who come back day in and day out that's fucking negativity what's going on right now is perspective mike it's perspective and reality i we we need it mike we need it but i I, i'm going to give you credit and convict you've got to concur mr agello who once wanted ryan reeves uh exiled from the city of toronto and the game of hockey it hasn't necessarily capitulated to the, the the world that Ryan Reeves represents, but Reeves has played better and shown more of his worth at his age and is doing a better job with the team. So what has Mike said? Yeah, he has. And he's patted him on the back for it. Would like to see more. I don't know how that's negative, the perspective that we're, we have on this game. And obviously the, uh, the history that we have – uh, being fans of this game and watching this game, you can't say it's been that um, fruitful, right? So to be in this place, I don't know why you wouldn't have, you know, uh, a slight bit of skepticism regarding, you know, what we're expecting from the team that we've devoted our uh, hockey fandom to. Last word to you, Mike. Yeah, uh, I would just say that, um, you know, it, be- it does bear watching that, uh, you know, the, the, the race right now in the, uh, that it's still alive. Uh, it, it, between the Leafs and Tampa Bay, uh, that could sort of upset right. the apple cart, so to speak, uh, when it comes to uh, who they play in the first round. And that final game on Wednesday, uh, April seventeenth, in Tampa, could mean you know determine who the Leafs play in the first round. We didn't mention Mitch Marner seventeen minutes last night, um, an assist on Bobby McMahon's goal, protected minutes, uh, sheltered minutes, easy. Yeah, I- minutes. I think they were just easing him back after being out for a month. I mean, they need they need him to stay. You know, in spite of their success since he was out, they need him at a hundred percent. And I think they were being extra careful when it came to um, bringing him back too early. They need him in the lineup. They need him to be uh, on the power play, especially on the penalty kill, especially in the playoffs, to be to to have a chance to win. And we'll see. Yeah, we're all excited for what's to come. The Two things that I am concerned about, you just mentioned them, special teams, the penalty kill, and the power play. Both will be absolutely essential in the postseason. If you can't get on top of it and use them to your advantage, you are done. Mr. Agello is at HockeyBuzz.com. I'm on Instagram, at Norm at Oak Ridge Ford. Be sure to reach out to us and like the content, subscribe to the channel. We're a few subs short of where we'd like to be at this point. There's still time to help us out. We appreciate you very much, and we know you feel the same about us. Mr. A, let's try to get together here in the next couple of days. Let's not leave it till Sunday, but it's a busy week to come, so we'll have to put our heads together and uh, reconnect for another combo when the time is right. For Mr. A, I'm Mr. J, the Leafs combo, and the Sunday Spectacular is out.